Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, want to welcome you to another Banger class. Um, today, we're going to talk about Sage Paperless Construction um, and how you can kind of use it to declutter and um, really simplify your AP process in particular. Um, so Sage Paperless Construction, uh, main bulk of it is going to be AP Flow. AP Flow is going to be the, the spot where most of our clients would find that they spend most of their time. You can use it to um, bring already electronic documents or paper documents that you've received into uh, your Sage Paperless system and prepare them for review, whether that means totally entering all the coding you would use in Sage 300 or Sage 100, or just starting that um, that coding and then sending it on to um, the next step in the review process. Uh, for most of our clients, that's gonna be the AP specialist or even potentially just your, your one AP clerk um, receives the document, sets the vendor in and sends it off to um, a project manager, but you may have several steps in that process. Um, you can have those, um, those documents then reviewed, coding can be updated or returned to that processor for, um, for further coding or recoding. Um, and then once those documents have made it through the import or the review process, you can export those um, invoices in particular to your Sage accounting system, and it'll include a link to the document for review. So the benefits out of this are going to be that you get to have um, a, a lack of paper that can be lost, wrinkled, you won't see, you know, uh, uh, coffee stains or pieces like that um, just in your process. Nobody's going to lose the document. Nobody's going to um, get it crumpled in a, a, on site, anything like that. Um, you can also, with, uh, with the paperless uh, system, you can use the e-portal. The two pieces of the e-portal that I like the most are going to be e-invoices. Uh, e-invoices just takes the review step of the Sage Paperless system and puts it in a web browser. Um, from the web browser, anybody who's the reviewer, typically project managers, can access e-invoices to um, review, code, um, make notes on, their invoices uh, just from anywhere. They can be sitting uh, in the trailer on the job site. They can be sitting in the office, whatever whatever location is best for them. And you have almost all the same features as the full Windows application. Um, Sage Paperless is going to be able to look up data for coding from your Sage accounting system. So it will be able to see what cost codes are associated with your job, what um, what vendors are in your system already, um, and that kind of thing. And so that you can input all of the coding that you would manually do in your Sage accounting system through Sage Paperless for an invoices piece. And you can do all of that coding from the uh, e-invoices uh, E portal application. Um, there's also eCapture, which is probably my next favorite of the ePortal applications. eCapture allows you to take a mobile device and take a picture of a document. Um, most commonly, I see this used uh, for credit card receipts, um, sometimes uh, invoices that are received on the job site. Um, a handful of my clients also use it to um, take a snapshot of, say, a receiving ticket or um, purchase orders as they're issued. Um, with eCapture, you can use that mobile device to input some basic coding or um, or just send it to a queue for the AP specialist or AP clerk to do the coding on. Um, the eCapture tool leads pretty directly to the credit card importer. Um, the credit card importer in Sage Paperless allows you to take your credit card statement available in, from almost all providers already in QuickBooks or Quicken format, um, and you can just directly download that and then import it into Sage Paperless. 
You can then assign the lines to individual invoices or um, you can assign them to any number of invoices really that you want to create off of that credit card statement so that you can record your credit card statement just the same as you would in Sage 300 or Sage 100. Um, but you don't have to type out each individual line. Um, the amounts, the transaction dates, those pieces are brought into Sage Paperless automatically. And depending on what information might be recorded from your um, credit provider, you may also be able to download your statement in another format that allows you to set up custom mapping. And in that case, you can do things like automatically code the job, potentially automatically code the cost code, all of that, and, um, and bring that in. When you combine the eCapture tool with the credit card importer and you're recording your credit card receipts, even if you aren't able to get a custom mapping for those uh, credit card statements, you can actually bring the data in and then automatically match it with your credit card receipts and code your line items for your credit card statement with the coding that was entered for those credit card receipts. So instead of a hectic scramble at the end of the month to try and get all of your credit card lines in, the receipts matched to it, and everything coded in order to pay your credit card statement, you can be coding this throughout the month on your credit card receipts, bring in your credit card statement automatically, it takes about five minutes usually, and then have it automatically match receipts to it, which also takes about five minutes. And then you're done. You can have any of the invoices that you needed to have created off of that statement in Sage 300 or Sage 100, just, just how you normally would. Um, the final piece of Sage Paperless that we're really going to look at is going to be Doc Route. Um, and that's going to be something that is used for documents that aren't part of the AP process, um, where it tends to be a little bit less rigid. You don't tend to have quite that same level of, I'm going to have a processor that looks at my document first, one or more reviewers that make sure that that document is accurate, and then I'm going to import it into my accounting system. For uh, documents that you would pass through doc route, you'd be looking at something more like um, W4s, something where, you know, maybe you have a hiring manager who um, gets the W4s from the new employees and then um, needs to pass that on to HR. Well, in that case, you could use doc route to um, say, I'm going to create a W4 and then I'm going to automatically route it and it's going to send that W4 over to HR once that's been brought in automatically. Um, we don't find as many of our clients decide to pick this up, but it's still a useful tool that's, uh, that's really worth looking at. I'm just not going to go too deeply into it beyond what we've seen here. Um, I do kind of want to take you through what Sage Paperless would look like. Um, and we're going to start from the home page of Sage Paperless, uh, where you can actually see that you can receive some alerts. There's ways to um, tag documents like hot documents um, so that everyone in, the, in your company can see that, oh, hey, these are documents we need to pay attention to. Um, it's possible to uh, use kind of these checked out um, file system to prevent people from modifying a file while you're working on one. Um, but more importantly, we want to kind of see what's it look like if I want to bring in an invoice and I want to send it through the process of, um, coding it and approving it and then exporting it to my Sage accounting system. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is bring in an invoice and we can do that just by pulling up a file browser and finding that file and then clicking and dragging over top of the Sage Paperless application. Um, and we should see well, something seems to be going a little <laughs> awry here. Uh, my apologies. 
Let's try relaunching um, Sage Paperless here. Just a moment. Okay, let's try that again. Um, so what we should see is that when you drag a document over it, you get a series of selections, and the easiest one to use is just push it to queue. And when you push it to a queue, it's going to ask you where that should go. Uh, we're going to send it to my queue for now. You can also use various um, ways of categorizing um, the document, and you can make notes here on the document that will be visible once you open it up for editing. So we could say something like, this is a note about this invoice. Um, if you have a document that's got multiple pages and you really only want one or some pages, you can use your page options to bring in um, those documents and split them. Uh, there's also a document splitter that's available to you, which can be found in the whoops, utilities um, so you could open it up and if you had you know a collection of say 10 invoices that you received uh, from an, a vendor or maybe you scanned in a stack of a handful of invoices and your scanner sent it to you as one pdf you can split those with this tool once you have the invoice in you can find the queue that you want and you can see that the invoice exists in a viewer you get some general information about it but we know that we're going to create an invoice off of this so we're going to select the invoice and create a new invoice off of it and here we have all the fields that we would have in a sage 300 or a sage 100 environment um, in order to code the document. So we're going to have a vendor, and we can look that vendor up from our Sage uh, data. Uh, you can do this same lookup on that e-invoices uh, application that I was talking about before. Um, and I don't believe I actually have... Yeah, I don't actually have this vendor in here, so we're just going to pick a vendor that we'll use um, to record this document's information on. Um, and you'll set up the vendor and invoice number. Um, in this case, we've got what, INV02081. Um, and then you've got your other fields to look at, but the vendor and invoice number are going to check against your Sage data to ensure that you're not duplicating an invoice. So it will look within the Sage paperless data to see, does this vendor have this invoice number already? And it'll also look within your Sage accounting software data to say, does this vendor have this invoice already? Um, you'll be able to, if you want, code at a top level, things like the job, the phase. Uh, if you use field POs, the field POs, you can select a date from a calendar or you can type it in just like you might type in um, your date for uh, any Sage application. So 09292022, for instance. And then it will also reach out to Sage to find the defaults that you've set for this vendor for the due dates and discount dates. Um, in Sage 300, that's like your days until due um, or your discount days. Uh, you'll set your totals in and um, fill in any use or sales tax as appropriate. Uh, we're not going to worry about that too much here right now. And then we'll add our lines. And you can add lines of several different types. You've got job, expense, equipment, 
or purchase order or subcontract for your commitment type lines. As a generality, for purchase orders and subcontracts, I recommend using the quick list. It's a way to pull in all the lines that you need already coded from those subcontracts or purchase orders rather than trying to hand code those and having to go into Sage to reference, oh, what's the purchase order number? What's the con subcontract line number and that kind of thing? Um, we'll say this one's a, a job type line and we'll come in here and start our work to code it. We don't have a work order associated with it, but we do have a job. So we're gonna use a lookup to say, oh, what job is that? And we'll just say it's uh, the Williams Post Office. And then we'll look up our phases. Phases, we don't have any on this particular job. Um, so you can hand type that phase if you want to, or you can use that lookup to select it. And then you'll see that it automatically picks up the cost code from the setting for this vendor in our Sage system, as well as the cost type, the GL account, and the sub account. So you're saving time in your coding, as well as saving um, yourself the clutter of making multiple copies of this invoice when we start to route it for review. Then we're going to do just a basic, simple fill in total and we'll see that it automatically codes our price and quantity for that line. We're just going to code this as a single document we've received. From there we can route this invoice or if we already have the knowledge that we're the people that are going to review it, we could approve it straight from here. We're going to go ahead and route it. Um, oh, I thought I had filled in this description here. We're going to go ahead and route it as if we're sending it to somewhere else um and the description would automatically fill in on this line if we had sent it here uh, the cost code that we picked doesn't exist on the job so we'll just say this is excavation work then we can route that invoice like i said and we'll get the option to route the invoice by line. So in the case of say like a credit card statement where you probably have um, you know five different project managers and those project managers are each responsible for you know something like a fifth of the credit card statement, you don't have to create five different invoices. You can send the lines that are associated with Bob to Bob, the lines that are associated with John to John, and so on and so forth. Um, in this case, we're going to have to automatically describe a, um, a receiver for this invoice, but you can also set up automatic rules based on things like what job is it, what's the GL account, what's the cost code, um, or even things like what's the date, uh, what's the vendor, and um, how much is the total on the invoice, and any field that you're coding on, you can use that to automatically determine which reviewer should be looking at this, or reviewers, if it's a multi-step process. Um, and so you can add a reviewer in here. We'll go ahead and just say that uh, I'm going to be the reviewer. And you select the lines that you want to send to that reviewer. And you'll send it through. And it will automatically open up the next invoice in your queue for speedy processing. Uh, from this step, we can see that there is a invoice that is awaiting review. So that's the pending status. And we'll go ahead and open up the, um, the review invoices tool and select myself from the list. And we should see Hmm. 
what we should see is that document that I just sent across. That's okay. Uh, we will very quickly do the same thing again. We'll just say it's power. And you can tab through these fields or you can click with your mouse to get through them. It's also possible to set these uh, fields as to whether their tab stops or not. So if you never use uh, work order, it can start automatically in job. And maybe you never use phase, it can automatically move to um, cross code from job. Uh, we're going to say same job, same phase. Do a lookup to make sure that the cost code exists within the job. And we will set that. Save our invoice route the invoice, and we'll use the user we're currently logged in as instead of myself. Um, so we should see that that goes across. We're going to say no to the approving. And we'll take a look at this in the approve invoices window. And here, we'll see that we have the invoice that we just created. We've sent it to ourselves. We can see this line that was created. And you know what? That's not the right cost code. So as a reviewer, we need to come in and say that, no, this is excavation. And we need to make sure that this uh, that this is actually recorded as labor. Um, it is right. It is the Williams post office, but we needed to come in and make those changes before we could say that, yes, this is correct. We could also use reject invoice to send that back to, uh, well, I guess me in this case, um, to say, hey, this is just totally wrong. Um, and then we can also do things like review the invoice by selecting one invoice over another, it will automatically open up different documents. Um, so we can see, I used the same sample document, but we can see that a couple of years ago, I used this uh, invoice to um, send something through to this uh, reviewer. And we can approve that document once it's coded. It will run checks on the document um, to see, you know, did did the document exceed the job budget? Um, does the uh, vendor have all their compliance and things like that that allow you to um, stop your reviewers at this point and say, no, you can't, you can't approve it until this stuff's taken care of, or even just make it a warning to say, oh, hey, by the way, this vendor's compliance is out of date. Are you sure you want to move forward with approving this invoice? Um, so you can check all of those things automatically with Paperless, which helps to speed up that process and make sure you're not paying people who shouldn't be paid yet and that kind of thing. Um, so once the invoice is approved, we can review that invoice using the invoice manager and say that we want to send that across to our accounting system. So we can sort this stuff to approved and see that, oh, here's one document and it's ready for various management pieces. Um, one of the best pieces is the ability to view the audit trail, which tells us what user did what, who they were acting as when they did it, and when they did that. So we can see, even though I barely touched this particular invoice, every single step of this whole process was recorded. 
So there's no question of who did what and when, when you need to figure out what happened with an invoice that goes bad. Um, with the invoice manager, you can also come in, delete invoices, make significant changes to it, etc. cetera. Um, but importantly, you can export it to your uh, accounting system, which mine is uh, significantly behind on the calendar here, but we can tell it to go ahead and send across. It's going to check things like the posting period. I just told it to post to 12 of 2019, and we're at the end of 9 of 22. And it will take a moment, run it across to our Sage Accounting, and then it will tell us that it has completed or failed. When it completes, it'll let you know what it sent across. If it partially completes, it'll let you know what made it and what didn't make it. And then you can, once it's sent across, review that uh, document from your accounting software. Uh, so just a moment here while I open Sage 100. And we can come into our accounts payable, find our payables. And see that the invoice that we just created is right here. And um, if you were in Sage 300, you would look it up with an inquiry to get to this piece, which is where you can find your attachments. Um, and it takes a moment. Uh, it runs about every 15 minutes in most cases, but a job runs in the background to attach a link to that document, which allows you to open it in the Sage Paperless Document Viewer so that you would see that document from Sage Paperless. in the, not that, sorry. This should open it in the main viewer. Something seems to be slightly off with my, uh, with my document, um, document management today. Um, but we should be able to pull it up in the main viewer back here, like when we were editing it. And that would take, like I said, about 15 minutes to come across. And it's just there in uh, Sage 300, you would look at the attachment from an inquiry. Um, I, I think that hits the, the biggest main points of, you know, how you can speed things up and declutter. Uh, so you're not making multiple copies of these invoices. Um, you're not... Uh, you're not going to be getting torn up copies, wrinkled copies, stained copies. Nobody's losing them. It's all there, all ready for retrieval, all automated as part of a process to make sure that it sends to um, the correct people for review. You can do the same thing for documents that aren't AP invoices using DocRoute if you choose to do so. Um, nothing aside from AP invoices is going to send across to your Sage accounting, but it does declutter your office. You don't have all that paper sitting around and you don't have that issue of, well, I need to look for that document, but somebody misfiled it. Um, you can look it up from anything that you've coded on it. So you can say, I want to know all the documents that were coded for this date or all the documents that were coded for this vendor. So even if the coding is wrong, you can still look it up by the pieces of coding that are correct. Um, Thanks guys for watching and uh, I hope you guys all have a great day.